Let's talk about reaction diffusion. Some of you might have seen those patterns in many design publications recently, and one of the prime examples, I think, is by a guy called Kouhei Nakama. Not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but this is one of the major um, examples of reaction diffusion in action. So reaction diffusion is a system driving the generation of those patterns here. And what it basically models is the behavior of two chemicals in a chemical solution. It actually sounds more complicated than it is. And although there are many tutorials which go into detail about how to simulate those individual chemicals, there's a rather straightforward way how to think about that system in image generation terms. When I look at this, for example, it's a tutorial for a two-dimensional reaction diffusion system in Photoshop. And I want to implement something similar in Houdini, but this time in true 3D. So it will grow those intricate patterns in three dimensions. And in order to show you how that works and what I'm going to implement in Houdini, let's head to Photoshop and build something similar to what this guy did here. What you see here is the result of some previous iterations of the system that I built, but um, I'm going to show you how I built it and what it's actually doing. So let's start out with a new file. The term reaction diffusion describes the two underlying principles of the system. So a diffusion, meaning that we have some chemical expanding, mixing with another chemical, flowing into the other chemical, and the reaction means the concentration of the chemical. In order to depict our two chemicals, we just choose the colors black and white and just draw some blobs here that depict some areas where the chemicals are. And the first step I like to simulate is the diffusion component. And the way I'm going to do it is by taking this image and first blurring it. So I'm going to go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and maybe give it a radius of 2. So the black is already bleeding into the white area, so it's diffusing at this moment. The second step I want to simulate is the reaction. And the reaction in this case consists of two components. One is an edge detection and one is an amplification of that edge detection. What that means is um, I'll have to find the edges of those areas. And the way I'm going to do it in Houdini is this. I'm going to make a duplicate of that layer and blur it again. Um, so I can just repeat that. And one more time and one more time. So this layer actually got blurred four times and this one time. Next step I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract both layers from each other. What that yields is an edge. An edge that is already diffusing into the outer areas, the outer bounds here. But as you can see here, it's not very bright, so we need to amplify this edge a bit. So we have pure white there. And the way I'm going to do it is with, uh, let me first merge those two here and then go to image adjustments, exposure, and dial the exposure up to 80. So I really amplify that border area, that expanded border area here. And that is it. That is the whole process. What I did here is I already created an action containing this process, and I can apply that action again and again on that same image. So we'll see the reaction um, progressing actually and you see those shapes evolving. So let's just step through this several times. Until I end up with something like this which pretty much resembles what I've seen uh, in the examples that I've shown you previously. However, I want to have this in 3D. The thing I'm going to do is rebuild this in Houdini using volumes and voxels.